Hi everyone. Welcome to True Corporate Business Solutions. We give you business solutions. Behind every successful business, there is a smart accountant. Okay, today uh, I want us to look at the non-current assets and the case. I'll be the one who will be taking you through the financial reporting paper previous known as F7 and the strategic business reporting paper, that is the professional paper. Right. So guys, uh, even for those who are doing financial reporting, I would hesitate to take you through uh, the international accounting standards uh, number one, like now, that is to prepare the proof to loss, the financial position without knowing the non-current assets. You have to know the non-current assets. This standard is very demanding. So we do have many standards that do affect the non-current assets. We have a existing PPE, that is proper planning equipment. We do have uh, IS-20, the government grants, we have IS-23 borrowing costs, we have IS-40, IS-36 investment of assets, IS-40 investment property, IS-40, one uh, that is agriculture, we call it the biological assets, and we also have the inference number five, that is the non-current assets sold for sale. Right, I'm going to start with IS-16 PPE. So now from the primary school learning, that is to say from financial accounting F3, I'm pretty sure that you learn that an asset is defined is uh, the resources that are controlled by an entity as a result of past events out of which future economic benefits are expected to flow into the entity right uh, yes you must know these standards you must know the standards right so the, the definition that's the definition on assets so there are three things that are used to define an asset the way there's the way to control there's the one past events and there's the way probable future economic benefits so that shows what we apply here is uh, the substance or a form. I didn't say assets are resources that are owned, but I have said that these are the resources that are controlled. So you might not be the owner. You, in terms of the legal form, you might not own the assets, but the fact that you have been given the control, so the fact that you have been given that control and you are enjoying the economic benefits, then it makes it an asset. So in accounting, we recognize the assets that we have control and also uh, when they benefit us. So this is what you have to understand. An asset uh, it brings economic benefits. If you ever hear even people saying that, don't be a liability but be an asset. So in other words, they will be saying it brings or generate economic what, benefits into the, into the organization. Right. So on standard, uh, let's, let's extend the idea on IC system PPE. Um, or PPE, these are tangible assets that are held by entity for use in the production uh, of goods uh, or we say or services, right, or for administrative purposes. So when we say this is IS-16 PPE, we will be saying that the intention is to use those assets. When you see a company acquires the assets, uh, and it is classified under IS-16 PPE, we will be saying that they have an intention to use the assets and not to what? Not to sell the assets. Yes. So now, um, what about if a company uh, wants to let it out to rent, to, to let it out out the property, like maybe the building they have, then it will be reclassified from IS PPE to then what to IS for investment property, right? So, but uh, when an asset is leased to a subsidiary, it will be still classified under IS PPE. Yes, because the parent and the subsidiary, they are just one. So remember, we do consolidate. So they are just one. So in that case, it's not investment property. It will be still classified under IS-16 PPE. You understand? Even when the assets are leased to employees, it's still classified under IS-16 PPE. But if it's leased out to third parties, then it will be reclassified to IS-14 investment property. Right. When a company holds assets with the intention of selling them, in other words, we are saying we no longer expect to have these assets in the long period of time in the company. So therefore, we will reclassify to if it's number five yet for sale, and they will be removed from non-current assets and recorded to current assets. Because when you have an asset that you have an intention to sell, then it's, it's more like a current asset because you are now having the intention to trade it. Current assets are here for trading purposes. So you classify it under, under, under FS5. Right. Now let me explain on IS-16 PPE. What I expect you to know, the definition, initial recognition, initial measurement, 
the, the disclosure notes in the telephone mission, right? So, on the definition, we have explained about the definition and we also move on to the initial recognition. Initial recognition, when do you recognize an asset? You recognize an asset when it is probable that the economic benefits will flow into the entity. When we say it is probable, we are saying when the probability is high. When the probability is high that the benefits will flow into the entity, then we recognize it as an what? As an asset. When the probability is high that the, the, the company will benefit right. And also when we are able to measure the cost reliably. But what you have to understand is when we prepare the financial position, when we list our non current assets, we also record the amounts. So when you can't measure the cost that you have incurred reliably, then there is no need to recognize it as an asset. Right. So this is what you have to consider the initial recognition. And also, how about, how about uh, the initial measurement? On initial measurement, this is now when we want to value the asset. Like for example, a company purchased an asset. So what are the costs that you are going to include on the initial measurement? We want to give a value of the machinery. We want to give a value of the building. We want to give a value of the land. What are the costs that you are going to include? Just know that all the costs that you have incurred in bringing the assets to the working condition or to the working place, they will be capitalized. And what do I mean by that? When we say we are capitalizing, we are saying that we are treating it as a non-current asset. We are including it in the financial position under non-current assets. That's what it means to capitalize. So all costs incurred in bringing the asset to working place or to working condition, they will be recognized as an asset. They will be capitalized. I can give you an example. Let's say the company wants to build a factory. So when they build that factory, when they complete the building the factory, what is the value they are going to give? So just know that we are going to sum up all those costs that they have incurred from start. Like for example, for you to use the factory, to build the factory, you need to clean the environment, right? You need to, to clear the place. So you end up in carrying uh, the cost that you call the site overhead cost, or I call it the site clearance cost. And what or, or what else are you going to incur? Other costs, you need the material, you need the labor. And there's also need the, uh, we also need the professional fees. So all costs that we are going to incur till the factory is complete, those costs, they are part of the value of the factory. You understand? So we add all the costs that we incur, then we give the value to that factory. You understand? So all costs incurred. And also, what I can say, I can say that all costs incurred before the asset is ready for use, they will be capitalized. So just know that people, they have challenge when it comes to valuing these things. But I want you to understand these two things. We have the improvement cost. We have the maintenance cost. When you incur a cost, ask yourself a question that, is it going to improve the value of the asset? Or is it going to maintain the value of the asset? If it's not going to improve, therefore, it's not part of the asset. But if it's going to improve, therefore, it's part of the asset. You understand? Improvement cost, they must be capitalized. Maintenance cost, they must be expensed. Right. I will give you an example. Let's look at, the, at a building. We have a building, right? Then a uh, company decides to extend some, ro some rooms. So like they will incur the extension cost, uh, cost of extending the building. Maybe they have they had 20 rooms. They now want to have 25. So they want to extend and build uh, five more. So they will incur uh, costs, right, of extending the building. So you have to ask yourself a question that, yes, we have incurred the cost. But the cost that we have incurred, is it going to improve the benefits? From 20 rooms to 25 rooms, I do believe that the benefits are going to increase. Both end up in 25 rooms. So the cost that I have incurred is an improvement cost. So it's going to be added to the building. You understand? But another example, let's say we, just, we have decided to just paint the building. Painting the building won't increase your income. It won't increase your money. Yes, the yes, it will look nice, but it doesn't improve the value. Yes, because the money is not, the, the cash flows are not increasing. So therefore, it's not part of the building. So it's just an expense. Decoration costs just an expense. That's it. Right. That's what you have to know on 
initial measurement or cause that in K uh, before the asset is ready for use, some they might indicate the installation costs, the testing costs, all those type of costs they are capitalized. Easy stuff, fascinating stuff, isn't it? Right, move on. Then we also have um, we can talk about um, uh, we have discussed about the initial measurement as well. Then on D recognition, when a company sells disposing assets, therefore let it be recognized from the from the box. Right. You must no longer keep it, you must no longer continue to recognize it under non current asset when you have disposed the asset. When you no longer have the asset, you must remove it from the box. On the disclosure notes. We disclose all the changes. For example, I'll give you an example. If we said, let's say, uh, the opening balance of all our non current assets was 500,000, then the closing balance is now um, maybe you can say 900,000. Right. Are you seeing that there's a difference? So people must not use the assumption that why, uh, why do we have a change? What happened? Do we uh, purchase this, uh, other assets or do we revalue other assets? So people must not choose assumptions. So what do we disclose? All the changes that, uh, that, have, uh, that have caused the opening balance to be different with the closing balance must be disclosed, right? We must not use assumption. What causes the difference between the opening balance and the closing balance? The BD and the CD. What causes all the difference? We can talk about the revaluations that you've made. We can talk about that uh, you acquired. Uh, new assets like which is uh, which are called additions. We can talk about depreciation. Depreciation yes causes uh, the opening balance to be different to the CD because you are depreciating. So it, uh, it must be disclosed. On depreciation, maybe you want to disclose about the method that you've used. If you use the straight line, if you use the reducing balancing method, or you want to tell us about the useful life. You disclose all that. When you even dispose the assets, you, it must be disclosed in the notes. Yes, that's it people, that's international accounting standard. So that's it. So that's international accounting standard number 16. We are done with this standard. So move on to the next international accounting standard.